The time has come. Do you want to make millions and millions of stubs in MLB The Show 23? Well, the time is growing closer. We're T-minus four days until launch off. And when I say launch off, I mean making millions of stubs. Now, how do you want to do that? First thing you want to do, go to the subscribe section right now. Smash the subscribe button. Smash the like button. Leave a comment down below. Show support. I'm grinding these videos out. Because you guys are smashing the like button, smashing the subscribe button, and I'm keeping it going. This is how we're going to be rich in this game, boys. Now, for those of you who don't know what I'm talking about, for those of you who are like, how do you make stubs, right? You see my 66K, you're like, this guy's broke. Let me click off. Whew, I wouldn't do it, because ba-bang! I'm going to drop a little photo right now of all my investments. I'm worth 1.6 mil, boy. What are you worth? So how do you want to make the stubs? That will be the show, 23. So it's really easy. What you want to do, it's investments. And if you don't know what that means, every single three weeks in MLB The Show this year, they're going to be updating the live series cards and changing the overalls. So what does that mean? A player, uh, a live series player has a certain overall start the year. But let's go with Paul Goldschmidt. Last year, Paul Goldschmidt started off with like an 82 overall live series card. He tore it up every single week and he ended the season high diamond. So the quick sell value of an 82 overall last year was 1200 or not 1200 it was 900 and by the end of the season Paul Goldschmidt was going for over 10k so that's a big profit margin right there and you have to invest big in these players I posted roster integration videos I posted two of them if you guys show support on this video I might be able to post a final roster update prediction video showing who I think is going up who I think is going down because we're late in the week now SDS usually has these roster updates prepared by the time it's Thursday so games that happen on Thursday those don't really count because SDS, they have to repair the dropping it Friday. This is what I'm talking about. They already have some updates in the game, but these are, these are just based on positional changes. Friday, at whatever time they're dropping the update, it's going to be full of cards. Our cards, that's right, right? We need them to go up. So how do you make the stubs? How do you choose who to invest in? Who am I invested in? I already showed the picture. Um, but let's go through case by case on how to make these stubs. Now, I will make a quick little front line. Obviously, I'm no money spent. 1.7 mil ain't bad for no money spent. Here's my team. My team's nasty. I mean, I, I can win games. My team's stack, right? I don't even need stubs right now. That's why I'm holding on to them. I could do collections if I wanted to. I'm not a huge fan of the collections. Maybe if you guys uh, can, can convince me otherwise. But what, what you really want to do is you want to look at cards who are outperforming their current overall and who are also below their price. Cards like Vlad... Guerrero Jr., yeah, he's an 84 overall, and he's playing above an 84 overall price, so he's going to go diamond, but he's already at 3,000 stubs, so the profit margin isn't really there. You can look at a card like Alec Manoa, for instance. Alec Manoa, yeah, he's quick sell, but he's getting rocked in real life. He sucks. He sucks. He was diamond last year, but this year, oh, this year he's playing like a bronze, to be honest. Sorry, movie fans. Um, but yeah, Alec Manoa, not a guy you want to invest in, even though he's quick sell, because his ERA is through the roof, having a really rocky start to the season, it would be a super long, t long time before he even goes up. He might even go down, and then you lose your stubs. So you gotta be smart about that. Now you look at a guy like Babam, Dansby, Babam, Swanson. <laughs> That's pretty funny. Look at him. An 83 quick sell is 1,200 stubs, and right now his buy now is 1644. So there is risk involved if you were to buy him right now. I bought 183 Dansby Swansons at a basis of about. 1250, 1300 stubs. So he's if if he was doing bad, come Friday, if he was doing bad, if he was batting like 250, the investment didn't pan out. You know what I do? Quick sell, quick sell duplicates, and I could just like that, just like that, bam, quick sell every single Dansby Swanson I own, and I don't really lose that much. I lose 100 per, I lose maybe 10k. Now when Dansby Swanson, he's batting 350 in real life, insane batting average. I predict him getting at least a plus one this update. So his quick sell will become 1500. People will think he's gonna go diamonds. His buy now might go closer to 3000, kind of like Vlad, right? That's my play. I'm also in it for the long term. I think he's gonna go diamond. So when Dansby Swanson goes diamond, I bought in at 1300 subs, and I'm gonna have 183 that are now worth 3000 instead of 1200. Profit, boys. Profit's what we need. We're greedy for that money, right? You know what I'm saying? Xander Bogarts. Bogarts, 82 overall. 900 is his quick sell. I bought in around around 1,000. I'm already making 400 profit per, and I can see Bogarts. He's he's raking as well. 
So we're going through all these investments, right? Shane Bieber, this is a perfect example. Shane Bieber, I was invested in Shane Bieber. You guys might've seen the, the previous videos. If you're one of the homies, if you subscribe, watch the Ross Dudley videos, right? Shane Bieber, I said, you know what guys? I think Shane Bieber's a good investment. Shane Bieber, he's 900 stubs quick sell. There's zero risk involved is what I said. His ERA was around two. And then he, he, you know, his ERA was around two. And I said, invest. If he has another good start, he's gonna get an upgrade. He could go diamond in the long term if he keeps this performance up. Now, what happened? Shane Bieber, I think one or two days ago, faced the Washington Nationals. I watched the, I watched the game. He got rocked. The Nationals sucked. The Nationals are so bad. They're one of the worst teams in the league. And Shane Bieber gave up like 10 plus hits. Uh, I think he only had like three or four strikeouts. Now he did only end up giving up three runs in like seven innings, which isn't awful. But you know what I did? I had 200 Shane Bieber's. I did the nice little quick sell a Rooney and I sold about 190 Shane Bieber's at quick sell and I lost zero stubs because I didn't risk any stubs in the first place. So it was zero risk and I didn't see him getting an upgrade in the end. So I cashed out of that investment and put my stubs elsewhere. Then you got a guy like Framber Valdez. Framber Valdez, I did the same strategy as Shane Bieber. You can see right now, he's not that much above quick sell and his ERA right now is about, it's about a two point something. And Framber Valdez, he had seven scoreless innings yesterday until he didn't. In the seventh inning, he gave up four runs because Hector Neers doesn't know how to pitch. Um, go look at that clip. Hector Neers, 0-2 count. All of Framber Valdez, uh, all of Framber Valdez's runners are on base because Jeremy Pena made an error. 0-2 count, two outs. Hector Neers is about to get the side out without giving him a run. Here it is. This, if you guys can see my hair right now, I'm throwing the nice little splitter, right? Hector Neers splitter, coming in, coming in. 0-2 pitch, obviously in the dirt. Nope, right down the middle, 490 foot home run. Grand Slam and Framber Valdez's ERA poof, all the way through the roof. Thanks, Hector Nearest. Really good. Now, I still think Framber Valdez qualifies for an update, so I'm holding on, but you got to look at things like that. Another example. This is a whew, this is an insider tip right here. Corey Seager, why is he so cheap? His price right now, you'll see, is $7.15 yesterday. Yesterday, I looked at the market. Corey Seager, 600 stubs. I look at MLB stats right now. Who's leading the leading batting average? I'm like, wait, Corey Seager's batting 360 right now. He only has 40 at bats, and that's because he got injured. He's going to be out at least four weeks, but he hit 360 through 10 games. That might deserve him a plus one upgrade. We have to see how SDS is going to handle injured players like him and Jeffrey Springs. But I think that Corey Seager could get a nice little boost, just this update. And also, I'm thinking long term. Corey Seager starts as an 81, has one of the best starts to the season of anyone, and then gets injured. I think he'll, it's just a hamstring, it's a hamstring injury, four weeks. He'll come back, he'll keep playing, and I think he'll get a pretty quick boost immediately uh, as he comes back from injury. And like I said, I'm, I'm, I have 300 of him at 600 stubs quick sell. I have zero risk. If he comes back and he sucks, we're gonna go quick sell all these Corey Seegers, right? And the way to get them is on the MLB The Show app. MLB The Show app, you can really just spam orders. I recommend doing it at nighttime because uh, you're gonna go to sleep and you don't really care what happens, right? Turn off notifications, because bam, my God, that gets annoying. Nico Herner, that's another good uh, tip right there. I got him at quick sell, and now he's batting like 340, 330. He'll probably get a boost, and just like that. You wanna find low risk cards that you can kind of do this strategy with. <clears throat> now let's go look at the market, and we'll see what I'm talking about. Those are some of my investments and where I bought in. Let's see. Oh my God, you guys ever have a hiccup like that? <laughs> Let's see um, you know, some of the investments you guys could potentially buy into. Now I like, look. let's look at 79s first because those, those are usually uh, the most biggest profit margins. So what you wanna do, a 79 overall, the quick sell is like 150 or something, right? Nothing, nothing major, I think it's 150. And the 80 overall quick sell value is 400. So going from 79 to 80 is a huge profit margin. It's two extra stubs. That's crazy good. So I like doing silver to golds uh, the most. Looking at a guy like Taylor Ward. Taylor Ward was batting 290 um, a couple of days ago. And that made me put 550 orders in for Taylor Ward. He dropped off a clip a little bit. He's hitting like 250, 260 now. I'm not sure if he's going to get an update or not. Um, honestly, I don't know if he deserves it, but I'm kind of selfish you want him to. Uh, I bought in around like 200. So if I bought all these Taylor Wards at 200 stubs, I found when I, when I thought he was batting almost 300, you know, the profit margin was there. So you want to do that. You look at a guy like, let's, let's say, let's say you know, you know nothing about baseball. Looking at the market, Joey Manessis is 185 stubs. If he was to go gold, you'd make two times your stubs when he's worth 400. So you see that, you identify 
a positive cash flow opportunity. And then you would go on your little device, your phone, your computer, your laptop, whatever, type in Joey Manessis. First thing that comes up, Joey Manessis, he's batting 220, 230. All right, just like that, the opportunity is not there. You look at my 640, yeah, I missed the ship. I actually overpaid for Manessis. I got him to like 250, 260, and uh, he's on, let's see, the worst team in the MLB. He did hit a go-ahead single yesterday. Maybe that's enough with the 220 batting average. Please, SDS, please make him go goal, please. He's not going to. Um, but you want to do that. You can look at guys like that. Um, the other day, I looked at Stephen Kwan. Stephen Kwan, somebody commented about Stephen Kwan. Shout out to you. I uh, asked him if he was a good opportunity. His batting average was like 280. If he had a good couple games, he had a chance to go uh, gold from a 79. Didn't have a good couple games. I, I bought in. I sold high. Made some profit. Uh, no risk. Jordan Montgomery's a guy, super low ERA, but he's already at 285 stubs, so it won't be two times the stubs. So you really want to look at opportunities like that. Jesus Lazardo. A lot of these starting pitchers are good opportunities. Pablo Lopez, if you look at his price, he's had like a one one point something ERA the entire season. If you look at his price, if you look back to like 4-05, 4-07, 4-08, he was around 200 stubs. And so that was the two times opportunity right there. You can see he shot up because he consistently had more performances. So these silvers typically sit at around 200 stubs. So if you can get them around there, it's super low risk unless they play bad. And then you sell off before the update with minimal risk but you have a lot of opportunity to make stubs in return. A guy like Matt Chapman. Let me see if I can find my guy, Matt Chapman. Cool. Me and Matt, we got a nice relationship. Not like that, not like that. But uh, <laughs> I got Matt Chapman's. I think I had 500 Matt Chapman's at around 250 stubs per Matt Chapman. Now he's 1,500. I made a almost a, was that, eight times, seven times profit. That's what you like to see. That's where a lot of my stubs came from. That's where I'm invested. One major person I like this season one major person that I think has a chance to shock a lot of people and is overall not great is Jack Flaherty. Jack Flaherty has a start tonight against the Arizona Diamondbacks. Not sure how the Diamondbacks have nine wins, uh, but let's just say they're not getting the win tonight when Jack Flaherty pitches. I'm invested. I have a thousand Jack Flaherty's. I bought them all at 82 stubs over the last two days. The last two days I bought them at 82 stubs. Look at his price. Hasn't really fluctuated that much, and all of a sudden today, it's super high. That's another tip. The day that starters pitch, if they're in a good position to succeed, if they're already doing good in the season, they're at a two or three area, right? Their price is gonna randomly shoot off the day of their start, and if they're a couple innings near their start, their price is gonna skyrocket as well. Might be a good sell opportunity. Either way, I got a lot of Jack Flaherty's in advance because I planned, I was like, you know what? This guy, he has a 1.5 ERA through three games, I believe. And he's, he was sitting at quick sell for a 76. Like, if Jack Flaherty can give up two runs or less tonight, he's getting an upgrade. So the, it's, it's like free. It's, it's like taking money from a baby. And SDS is that baby, you know what I'm saying? So you got to find opportunities like that and really try and cash in on stubs. No money spent grind. It doesn't stop. That's how you want to make the most stubs in LB The Show 23. Smash the subscribe button. Smash the like button. I want to post gameplays. If you want to see gameplays, subscribe and let me know. Let me know who, who, I, should, who should I debut. I got 1.6 mil subs. I ain't, I'm not afraid to spend it. Look at this market. Ooh, JT. Ooh, that's a little pricey. You know what I'm saying? I can get a lot of Jack Flaherty's for 165. But I'll do it. I'll do it. If you guys subscribe, comment. Thanks for watching, boys. Make some stubs this